ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Menu Podcast. This is a podcast about food, food that is newsworthy, and news that is food worthy. Man, every time I say it, I like it that much more. I am joined by my good friend Josh Elkin, and we are on opposite sides of the North American continent. I am in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and Josh is in Los Angeles, California, United States of America. Josh, say what up, please. Good day, good evening, good whatever time of the uh, day that you're listening to this. My name is Josh, as Dave said, and this is The Menu Podcast. I am calling you from, or calling you, I'm speaking from Los Angeles, sunny Los Angeles, California. It is sunny today, whereas yesterday and likely tomorrow will be raining because, you know, global warming. And, it's been really uh, exciting there. Yeah, it's this. Listen, a lot of, lot of, lot of anti uh, drought stuff going on. Did it? Did it right hail now. on you the other day? No, but there was a frost warning this morning. Isn't that trippy? And the mountains in the distance are all covered in snow. Oh, I w- drove to Orange County uh, not long ago, and the mountains that normally in Anaheim aren't snowy were pretty snowy. Sick. So that's that's fun. But it's, anyways, it's we're happening. not here to talk about the weather. We're not talking here to talk about the weather. Although, here. I just want you to know, Josh, if you do want to make another side podcast where we talk about the weather, I would be very down with that because uh, you know me. Love me some good uh, abnormal weather. Oh, Big yeah. fan. Oh, Big oh, yeah. fan. Oh, yeah. anyways, the whole podcast, that whole podcast is just comparing weather apps. Yeah, you just you know what? Just let me let me do my weather thing on my own. Nobody needs to know about my weird weather fetish. Uh, that's okay. But um, so today we are going to talk about uh, food, food in the news, uh, different news stories that uh, we've had our producers uh, working tirelessly to come up with really fantastic. Uh, and interesting news topics. And by producers working tirelessly, I mean Josh uh, pasting a couple of links into a Google Doc so that we could talk about food with you guys. Uh, hey. uh, all the exciting things that have happened in the world. That's true. Uh, you know, Dave and I uh, on the regular talk about food news, uh, you know, coast to coast. I'll call Dave sometimes and be like, hey, Dave, did you hear about this? And Dave would be like, no, I'm in Canada, but did you hear about this? And I, I'm like, we don't have Tim Hortons here, Dave. Uh, so we thought, why don't we bring this conversation <laughs> to you and we can all talk about food news and news food together. I really love it also. Dave, news, food, Dave, food, news, Dave, Dave we, we, we don't have Tim Hortons here. You know this. Why do you have to talk <laughs> about Tim Hortons? Do you miss, Just quickly, before we get started, do you miss Hortons there? You miss I, I actually... You know, here's the deal. I, I love I love coffee, as you and most people know. You know and as most lo- people do. love coffee. Yeah. And coffee at Tim Hortons is great. But what I really love is that underwhelming, sort of not good, but I love it, over cream cheese, under toasted bagel. It's you know that one? It. It's, it's perfectly garbage. It's it's perfect in a garbage perfectly sense. garbage yeah it's yeah. just it's a real piece of shit but it's about as good of a piece of shit as you could possibly find yeah yeah and, i and dare you to find a better piece of shit it's hard it's really hard to find a really good bagel outside of montreal or new york city it really is i think i think the thing that you're you're getting confused though is you're longing for that garbage bagel but also your natural uh, genetically uh, it's your your Canadian tendencies, your genetic Canadian tendencies uh, that makes you long for Hortons. The further yeah. you are away from a Hortons location, uh, the weaker your Canadian powers become. You notice, I haven't seen you wear plaid in in a long time. Uh, your accent is starting to go. Do me a favor. What do you? What kind of uh, uh, it's Italian cuisine that you put sauce on is called? Oh, it's called pasta. Did I just fully? Did I just fully Americanize myself? It, no, did. just recognize it, that it's happening past, slowly. Past it's happening slowly. It's like anti kryptonite. The further you get away <laughs> from a Hortons, the more it sucks your Canadian powers out of you. Oh, it's like a <laughs> it, it's like a rip in the maple leaf every every day. It's a little yeah. rip in the maple leaf. <laughs> but listen, the thing is, is that it is we're talking food here, and it is important to note that that perfectly garbage bagel is something that if I don't have it for like three, four days, I, I mean, I start to get, I start to have with, withdrawals. I get a little antsy. Uh, it, it's really devastating. Yeah, no, listen, I, it's not a joke. Like it is perfectly garbage. <laughs> we all it's love not, it. It's not a joke. It's dead serious. <laughs> uh, hey. I'm really I'm I am so serious about I a bad bagel. So serious about a bad bagel right now. 
Um, without further ado, I think let's get uh, let's get onto these here topics we've got because boy oh boy, have we got a whole shitload of things that we need to be talking about there, but. That is so true, Dave. We have actually is a really exciting list. There, there are so many things on this uh, on this menu today that I'm really fired up about getting into. So let's let's start with the first one. How many things? There, uh, ten, what did we count? Ten, eleven. Like ten, ten things. We had eleven. You, you took yeah, one I out. Cons- I consolidated, consolidated two. Honestly, two of them. I two of them were close enough that I felt like you know what? I'm comfortable consolidating these. You guys at home, guess which one I consolidated as we go through this podcast. Leave a comment in the in the comments that. Is your guess as to <laughs> which one is? Leave a comment, Bad, and uh, shit game. depending real on where game. you're, depending on what your media you're consuming this <laughs> podcast at, leave a comment, or you could, uh, you could, you could. Uh, I like, tweet I like most, most people are like, leave a comment and win a chance, have a chance to win an Xbox, or uh, toss a like and let's see if we could get to a hundred thousand likes, and then I'll do a video of shaving my chest hair. Uh, so it's like, let me know which menu items you think I consolidated. <laughs> <laughs> real exciting, real exciting shit. Um, first topic, oh, and I, I actually topic. am really excited to talk about this. Uh, 7-Eleven is launching pizza, but not just any pizza, breakfast pizza. Yeah, now, 7-Eleven, they already, they already do traditional uh, pepperoni and cheese pizza. I think sometimes, depending on your geographical location, you might even get some, some bacon on your pizza or grilled chicken pizza. Yeah. Um, and now... 7-Eleven yeah. is offering a breakfast pizza. Isn't that, isn't that interesting, Dave? So I didn't even know that 7-Eleven did pizza uh, altogether, but I'll tell you what. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, I, I totally recognize that 7-Eleven has never been a stranger to the uh, full meal game. And I think the thing that's always been the most surprising to me is how many people truly indulge in a full 7-Eleven meal. Um, I know, you know when you're on your way to work, and you're stopping for some uh, gasoline, or perhaps uh, perhaps you need to uh, just grab a quick coffee, and 7-Eleven is the place to do that. It makes sense to jump in there for breakfast as well. Um, there's just something about convenience store food that has always scared the shit out of me. You know what it is for me? It's you walk into a restaurant, let's say Wendy's or McDonald's, and you know that there's specific people designated for the burgers or there's specific people designated for the french fries and and everyone has like their role you walk into a 7-eleven the same guy that's giving you your gas receipt and uh you know a pack of chewing tobacco is also serving you it's also like uh, tidying up the food tidying up the food reloading that hot dog rotator that little what is that thing that's not even a real bars for hot dogs yeah that's not even you don't actually consume the food on that rotisserie on that hot dog rotisserie that's just for you what here's the deal dave and this is an actual educated uh hypothesis is that um (laughs) that is to that (laughs) that is to hypnotize you (laughs) <laughs> hypnotize you to look to, at the to, other to you. section of food and you'd be like whoa those hot dogs really don't look good it's actually this a really sick strategy a really here. sick marketing strategy is like <laughs> tossing in something that's really particularly disgusting to deter you from buying that so that you'll buy something that has a better uh better higher markup you know high yeah. risk high reward uh, that's it that, I, that hot dog rotisserie say. it's a it's a more it's a martyr that's crazy. It's a martyr. It's a martyr. They intentionally throw that hot dog under the bus. And I always, without fail, always think back to that scene in The Simpsons with a poo where the hot dog falls on the floor and he picks it up and it's got like bugs and chewing gum and band-aids and hair and he just like blows it off and tosses it back on that little hot dog monkey bars. It's really... It's really a terrible, terrible situation. Uh, in the, also, you mentioned the things that the man handles. Let's not forget the key to the bathroom, oh probably the dirtiest thing in a convenience store. Uh, he also probably has to go and empty the garbages and probably also has to go and empty the garbages out by the gas pumps. And I just feel like given the filth of a 7-Eleven and the, uh, the 7-Eleven bathroom, um, even if he does go and wash his hands after those... Uh, those particular act- activities, his hands are still disgusting. Yeah. yeah. There's Not no way that there's any bit of cleanliness. Like the air in a 7-Eleven is toxic <laughs> enough. You want to sit there, like the food is basting in this like the toxic air. The air in a 7-Eleven. <laughs> you know what I mean? However, however, with all that being said, you can't yeah. hate that much on 7-Eleven. Actually, here in, uh, I, was, I was in 
I was in the west side of, uh, of LA not long ago in uh, Venice, and uh, I went into a 7 Eleven to, to get. Pardon me? Oh, just a beautiful town. Yeah, beautiful. Really, really nice little beach. <laughs> charming. And I went charming. into a 7 Eleven to get something, and there was like a whole section of fresh fruit at the 7 really? Eleven, which I was really, I was pleasantly surprised about. But alas, we're not getting into no, fresh fruit. It's almost like, you know, it's interesting. They- I, I, I'll give them one thing, 7-Eleven, and I think that this is uh, this is very important to note when you're talking about something like breakfast pizza, because you normally would be like, wow, that's a very particular item. There's only certain restaurants that I would trust to pull off something like breakfast pizza. But I've got to give it to 7-Eleven in that they really are trying to um, uh, become the epitome of the convenience store, that they will literally offer – Anything that you would need from any other type of restaurant or food related store or but they even have like, you know, like like some minor items from a hardware store. Like I bet if you needed a hammer, you could get it there. Or if you needed Advil, you could definitely get it there. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, or, or if you needed a just a jar of Vaseline for whatever personal reason uh, that you may just be, you know, it's like 11 p.m. It's really dry. And, you're really stuck dried. in you're yeah, stuck in like a random neighborhood, and you just maybe need some Vaseline. Um, they have that, so it makes sense that they would have full meals because they're trying to sort of fall somewhere in between just a plain gas station, uh, gas, 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 gas station, and uh, you know a fast food restaurant and a grocery store. It sounds to me like they're edging more towards grocery store if they have fresh produce. Still, don't think I'd trust fresh produce from Seven Eleven though. Yeah, I mean, they had a bunch of bananas, so you know, you get their <laughs> banana, bananas are wrapped up, so you can't really mess up bananas that much. To be oh, honest. right. Well, right. I mean, yeah, you could grow it with. I guess it could get like it, like in. I don't know how GMOs work, nor do I really understand the true threat here's of what, the here, pesticide. But I will you, say that if you spray this shit, it gets in. It seeps in, bro. Yeah, yeah. It well, here's what's right worse: the in. pesticides that are. Uh, you know, around this produce or, or the, or the air of 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's ultimately what it comes down to is trust. Would I try this if I was in America and there was a 7-Eleven nearby and I had just heard that they were offering breakfast pizza? I think I would acquire one, if not just to find out what it could possibly be like. Um, yeah, well, the, the, the description, let's, let's just quickly describe this, what this, this, this breakfast yeah. pizza is, because it's not a traditional yeah. pizza with eggs it and bacon not. on top of it. It is not. It says it here is... on this article. Go ahead. That we're, uh, that, that we, I found this at, is that it's a biscuit crust topped biscuit. with bacon, sausage, ham, scrambled eggs, cheese, and get this, a cream gravy. Now. Oh, no. First of all, I just want to no, say that's where they lost. Oh, uh, no, sorry. I thought we were talking about a sandwich for a second and gravy has no business on a breakfast sandwich. No, but, but I forgot we're talking does. about pizza and it does have to have some kind of sauce for it to be a proper. Why wouldn't they use hollandaise sauce? Oh, you don't want hollandaise sauce at a 7-Eleven. It coagulates. It coagulates and also it's raw eggs. So if it's sitting for a while, that'll get really unhealthy Real really quickly. But you know what? Like just taking the whole convenience store gas station like element out of this uh description it sounds like a fantastic dish it's so fantastic i think you might even have to do it on one of your uh cooking streams just throwing it out there what make this kind of breakfast pizza you you should make a biscuit crust bacon bacon sausage uh, pizza and you know me you know me when it comes to breakfast i i normally nine times out of ten i'm getting all the meat so right. the fact that this has bacon, sausage, and ham on it. It's everything you need. It's everything I need and want. The one thing that I really am not about is, is old eggs. Yeah, old eggs are really sad. And especially since you know it's a corner store, convenience store uh, egg, you know that it's going to be that microwaved yeah. sponge. Mm. And that, when it sits, can get real tired real quick. I guess the question is, yeah, because it's it's 7-Eleven, so none of this is being made to order. You're not walking in, going to a counter, and being like, excuse me, sir, I'll have the breakfast pizza. You're going into a little glass cabinet, you're popping it open, and you're putting it inside your own box. Like, like they have those little boxes sitting beside those glass cabinets. Yeah. You're loading it up yourself, you're bringing it to the cash, you're paying for it, and then you're eating it. I feel like the only way that I would safely consume this is if I got there early enough that it had just come off the... 
I, the I only say, way I'm eating say this the grill thing? out of the oven, but I feel like they don't even put it. It's probably frozen, right? They ship it to them. They ship it to them frozen. Yeah, it's probably like it's probably sectioned off. Like the bacon comes with in one pack. Everything no, comes they like don't in assemble. Pack. You think they assemble? Yeah, some assembly required for sure. You think so? I, see, I, would, I would never. Say... I would not consume this pizza unless I saw the person <laughs> make it with gloves on first yeah. thing in the yeah, I need... first. Yeah, I definitely need to know what they look like. That's very important to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, uh, however, th- see, that's the thing is that this old, like old eggs, not about it. But I would, I would take an old pepperoni pizza from Seven <laughs> like, Eleven. I would do that. <laughs> I would. I mean, I guess yeah. So the thing with pizza in general, shelf the shelf life of, of a pizza is fantastic. I oh mean, yeah, it's one of the most. It's Arguably one of the, the best repurposable. Is that a real word? Uh, real that. purposable uh, food items. You know, you could take it a day later and really uh, take any of the components and use it for something else, or just eat it uh, ice cold in its in its natural state, and pizza will withstand the uh, the flow of time better than notice, any like, piece of food. The, you ever notice the life of pizza? Like you get it, it's super hot, it's delicious, and then it sort of yeah. kind of. Kind of cools down and, and yeah. coagulates a little bit and gets a little hard, yeah. and then you put it in the fridge and it gets like white. Yeah, yeah. And then I it gets to a point sorry, go where on. like it becomes slimy and sort of yeah. soft, and that's when it's it's that you can't have that anymore. That's like after I, a week, probably. Yeah, after a week, it's no good. But I would say that like there's a weird period of time in between when the pizza is fresh and when it's in the fridge where it's actually not good. Not that it's not good; it's not as good as if you put it in the fridge. There it's like chalky. A, it's like chalky. Uh, it's also coagulated and room temperature. I would say ice cold from the fridge is better than that. I completely agree. But so the, the shelf life of a pizza is fantastic. That's why I could go into a 7-Eleven and I would probably feel pretty comfortable trying their pizza regardless what time of the day it is. With the exception of this breakfast pizza, because it's eggs, because it's creamy gravy. And I don't even know. Like, what does that even mean? What kind? Oh, sorry. It is a cream gravy, not creamy. I read it incorrectly. It's a cream gravy, which means that it's made out of like heavy cooking cream. I don't know if I like that just sitting out like that. For now, that is long. it Even is it, it is cream? Under one of those heat lamps. Is it cream? Okay, but what if it was in one of those like uh, sauce hot tubs? Sauce tubs, and you apply yeah, you it yourself. There's no way. There's no way that the assembly is done by by the human in the Seven Eleven, like by the the customer. There's no way. How would they do that? Would they let people in and start like handling the meats and choosing how much meat they get? And then they choose the ladles of gravy. It's not like a pizza buffet. Now, no, if 7-Eleven right wanted that. to open up a pizza buffet and you charge by the weight of the pizza, I think that would be pretty hype. I also think it's a little too advanced for 7-Eleven. I think a pizza buffet restaurant with like all it's things fantastic. pizza is probably an awesome idea. <laughs> it really makes me think back to the Pizza Hut buffet, there. which we don't have anymore in Montreal. Uh, rest in peace, Pizza Hut in Montreal. Uh, the Pizza Hut buffet was just such an excellent, excellent concept, regardless of the execution. That Pizza Hut near your, near your house doesn't exist anymore? I think it does, but I don't think it does the buffet anymore. Okay, fair enough. Uh, anyways, back wrong. to— I could be wrong. Back to this, you know what they say? I'm just reading the end of this article, and they they're saying now 7-Eleven is claiming that the breakfast pizza has become the second most popular pizza with their customers. I'm sorry, could you say that again? They say, 7-Eleven says that the breakfast pizza has become its second most popular pizza with their customers. Now, is that because they only have one other option? Or two other options? Like, how good can it really be? I feel like I have to go out there and try one. When did they, when did they release this? Announced the creation on Tuesday. Uh, so, Tuesday, like two days ago. Yesterday, so, excuse me. I would like to bring attention to the... No, last week. The ability of, 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 of companies, of people, to just make bold statements like that without backing up their facts at all. Doing this is is hella popular these days. Everybody's doing it. Just saying facts, claiming that they're facts without any evidence. Alternative. Alternative facts. I would argue that perhaps, not argue, I would just suggest that perhaps this is an alternative fact. It's only been, it's only been a couple of days. 
it's how been a week. Possibly, how have they? Where are they getting their analytics from that they can come up with this, the numbers. this breakdown? Yeah. yeah. Do they know how many they're selling versus how many are going in the garbage because of that aged cream gravy? I just feel like that's like second. Okay, fine. You know what? Maybe it is fair, actually. It's their second most popular pizza because they only have two pizzas. Their that's first pizza is pepper- yeah. First pizza is a pepperoni pizza and then this one. Oh, it's their second popular pizza. They failed to mention that it's the only other pizza that they sell. Yeah, if, if that's the case, then you got us. You did yeah, it. You got us. You, 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 fooled you really us. manipulated the words. This so it's not an alternative fact. It is a true fact. <laughs> yeah, by definition. Kind of, I just what like, kind of what kind of world is it that we're living in where we act, actually have to say a true fact? <laughs> so just I, a fact. I want to know like what their normal breakfast lineup is. Yeah, yeah. You know, like like they're they're claiming this because it says here that uh, the um, what did they say here? It says. Here's Irving the thing, Texas Josh. based company says that hot pizza has become one of its biggest ready to eat sellers and mornings are the be- busiest time of day in its stores. People so are, I totally people believe are... that without a doubt. People are, are not going to a 7-Eleven in the middle of the day or around dinner time nearly as much as they are first thing in the morning. They're going to fuel up or they're going to go grab a coffee, grab a snack, grab some treats for the rest of the day before they get to work, right? They're not going to go there in the middle. Uh, well, I mean, there are people, I'm sure, but. Not nearly as many are going to go there middle of the day during a break or or after work, uh, let alone to go for a meal, you know, whereas I feel like first thing in the morning, uh, people don't make breakfast at home anymore. Everybody goes out to eat breakfast somewhere else, whether it be a full sit down breakfast restaurant or, you know, we were talking about that Tim Hortons garbage bagel or we were talking we talk about uh, McDonald's <laughs> breakfast. That's where they're getting them. That's where they're going for their breakfasts. And so I feel like 7-Eleven, by making that statement, I mean, yeah, it's that just makes sense. That's just something that that has been trending for a long time. Here's the funny thing. I'm actually on the 7-Eleven website, and to tell you something, Dave, there is no breakfast pizza in sight. No mention of the breakfast pizza at all. No, there's three pizzas. There's pepperoni pizza, extreme meat pizza, and the triple cheese pizza. Not only that, but furthermore, when I go into uh, breakfast – there is still no breakfast pizza. So now I'm trying to think, is this a farce? Is this a lie? No, it's Associated Press. This news is reported by the Associated Press. Would they flat out lie about something like that? No, it's got to be. They just haven't updated their websites yet. They updated they updated their stores with the pizza. They haven't updated the websites yet. And that's okay. Uh, I'll Fair give enough. them time. You know, web development is not a, just an easy thing. You can't just snap your fingers and suddenly it's done, you know? So that's I'll give it. them that. I'll give them that. Um, I think, uh, so final, final thoughts on 7-Eleven Pizza Josh. Final thoughts are, uh, if I was in a 7-Eleven and I saw a breakfast pizza, I would certainly take a picture of it <laughs> and not eat it. <laughs> I, thought you were, I, thought you were gonna say, I would absolutely try it. Uh, I would certainly take a picture of it. Great call. So you wouldn't eat it. So that's not your no, jam. And I, just thinking I, I don't blame about- Thinking about old eggs, it yeah. just it really and you know what? I love eggs. You know I yeah, love I know. eggs. You're the champion of breakfast, the undisputed I am, champion. I of am breakfast. the undisputed champion of breakfast, except you hold the world title. Just, old eggs, man. Like, come on. How I do understand you like that. an old egg? Old so sweaty to, eggs. To what? your point, then I would say <laughs> sweaty eggs. <laughs> to your point, <laughs> I would say, um, I would try it if it was before 10 a.m. I feel like they probably put those things out at 6, maybe 7 a.m. Four hours is about as long as I would be comfortable to let that thing sit under a heat lamp before, I would, have to, before I would have to worry whether or not I would, I would gain some kind of flesh-eating virus from it. You are generous, my friend. I, I'm, also, I'm also dangerous. I'm daring. People call me Daring Dave. They've been calling me that for years. I take all the risks. Never heard that in my entire produces- life. I've known you for 20 years. Produces never heard highest, anyone call you Gary Dave. Absolutely you li- liar. <laughs> All my friends do. Hold on, as I as I sit here and, and Google the closest Seven <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you just he just needs the picture. It's for social media purposes. Uh, all Hold right, on, well, I just turned on my Google Home. Hold on. Okay, Google, turn off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. 
So 7-Eleven, you could keep your pizza unless yeah. it's really early in the morning and I'm very desperate and I'm in terrible shape coming out of a bar or a club like really hurting and I need something to but eat. Hey, the only thing is breakfast pizza. Hey, to all of our listeners and viewers out there, if you by chance pass by 7-Eleven and you see a yeah. breakfast pizza, please yeah. take a try it. and hit up Dave and I. We would love to see what it looks like. No, you um, guys try it. You guys tell us what it's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll live vicariously through your taste buds this Yeah, time. yeah. Yeah, and your immune systems. <laughs> Next up on the docket, Ooh, I'm excited Morios. about this one. I am so excited Morios. about this one. So I, here's the funny thing about this, Josh, is uh, last week we talked about Oreos, and we talked about the Oreo cream egg. And during that conversation, we had discussed how uh, Oreos seem to ebb and flow in terms of popularity or, or, or crazes. It's almost like it goes through all these like series of fads. There's like an Oreo fad every two years where Oreos just pop off. I don't know if that makes it a fad. I don't think it's fair to call it a fad. But, you know, fad is something that's here that, that's limited, uh, limited time, limited shelf life on the popularity of said item, whatever it is. Oreos go through those those short periods and then they disappear for a while and then they come back. And we called it last week. There is a resurgence. Oh, yeah. Big time. Have you, have you felt it, Josh? There's been an if, awakening. Oh, I have felt it. And in fact, I, I just got in the mail chocolate bar Oreo. What? Oreo chocolate bar. Oh, yeah. Ordered from Germany. What? It is, it is a chocolate bar with Oreo on the inside. That's remarkable. Remarkable. But alas, we're not talking about that at this no, present moment. No, but it's just, it's, it's, Oreo is back. So uh, here so it is. Back. Here it is. This is, uh, let me pull this up for you guys. You could see some of the items. Uh, ignore the Hyper X Savage SSD advertisement. But if you do want to get uh, a solid state drive, Hyper X offers the, the highest quality. No, we're not getting paid by Hyper X. Fuck those guys. Uh, McDonald's serves up an Oreo McCafe menu in Hong Kong. So this is not here. Which is sad. Not yet. Not yet. I hope that they apply this to all McCafes because McCafes uh, have not given me a reason to visit them yet. I still like getting my coffee from McDonald's to, as uh, part of the drive through I agree with that. I have not gone in for some fancy latte, some espresso twisted something or other with a fancy whip on top. Haven't rocked any of that. But this may, just may, give me the reason to go through their door. They have ordered up, uh, partnered up with Oreo in Hong Kong for a new limited time McCafe times Oreo Oreo Thins delight menu. Oreo Thins, those are the real skinny, like cracker like Oreos, right? Yo, honestly, don't sleep on Oreo Thins. I, no. I didn't give them the time of day. They're quite delicious. They have this like crunch to them that normal Oreos don't have, and it's really, it's, it's, it's quite pleasant. Same flavor. Yeah, same deliciousness. Huh. So. It's just an alternate Oreo, but as long as you have the same flavor, I think that's okay. Yeah, for sure. The, the chocolatey menu comprises two desserts and two drinks. Oreo tiramisu, sounds as delicious. well as the chocolate cheese tart. Awesome. Which is, delicious. which is a baked Oreo tart shell filled with melted chocolate and cream cheese. <sighs> it's a bit like a mini Oreo cheesecake. Josh, why yeah. haven't you made Oreo cheesecake yet? I know. I think I should probably do something like that. But now I'm thinking, like, it's just going to be like the McDonald's menu. Clearly, like this. I'm looking at this picture. I don't know if if anyone could see it, but good God! If you want to, if if you're if you're just listening, take note. Google it when you get home. Um, there is an Oreo milkshake, which looks ridiculous. Every one of these items is just covered in crushed Oreos. Yeah, which the is crushed Oreo. Ridiculous. It looks like they've crushed like two to three cookies and scooped them on top of whatever beverage it is that we're looking at. Be it the latte, be it the uh, the uh, there's a uh, there's uh, the tiramisu, there's uh, there's the milkshake that Josh mentioned, uh, and each of them has one solitary Oreo stuck into the uh, crushed remains of his friend. I mean, think out of all of these uh, menu items that you listed off, personally, the tiramisu is the thing that hits home with me. I love a yeah. good, creamy, delicious dessert. Yeah. Personally, I love yeah, that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, here's the deal is you know that McDonald's does Oreo well because the Oreo McFlurry is just straight up delicious. It's ar arguably the best one. 
Yeah, I know a lot of might... people are all about like the strawberry sh cheesecake, mm -hmm. shortcake, whatever it is. There's, uh, you know, people really like. Uh, uh, I think they they do uh, they do they do an M and M's. Uh, there's a bunch of other varieties, and they have the limited time ones that if people get real fired up on. I still think the classic uh, uh, Oreo McFlurry is the best one. Yeah, I completely concur. So you you know, with with that trust being said, you know, McDonald's does a good job. Yeah, at Oreo uh, you conception. You can count on them. You can count on them fucking with some Oreos. Totally. Um, the cheese tart probably could could use a little help. I mean, if it was a cheese pie, that'd be a different story. But a cheese tart? Yeah, because you know that they do pies real well. The McDonald's yeah. apple pie is, is just a classic fast food menu item. Uh, Dude, that I'm has just thinking. withstood the test of time almost as well as the Big Mac and the Chicken McNugget. Yeah, but don't they go in and out of selling? No, the those apple, apple pie pies have never gone consistent? away. Okay. That apple pie, at least in Canada, I can't speak for the States. I've never seen it. But in Canada, I mean, that apple pie is always around. I dare you to go into an, uh, uh, I, I dare you to find me a McDonald's that, do, that isn't always stocked with apple pies. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I'm actually, like, did, fully did they getting, miss? Did, my mouth is watering hungry. Too, yeah, like I want apple pie so badly now. <laughs> did they miss the, the? Did they miss the? Did they miss it without coming out with like an Oreo hand pie? Because that sounds like it'd probably be really yeah. delicious. As opposed to the tart. Listen, I'm open to the tart. I'm sure it's delicious. And a tart is very similar to a pie. It's got a crust. It's just a different kind of crust, right? It's got filling. Just a different kind of filling. It's pretty much a pie. Whether they call it a, a tart or a pie, I don't think. I think we're just splitting hairs here. But yeah. If you if you trust McDonald's to come up with a pie, uh, then you should trust them to come up with a tart. But what I would have loved to have seen is, yeah, like you said, that that hand pie. Because their hand apple pie? pie isn't really a pie. No, I mean, I mean it's it's, a, it's more of like an apple an apple hot pocket. It's an apple burrito. That's a hot yeah. pocket. It's exactly yeah. like a hot pocket. You it's look a, it's, side a, by it's, side, a, it's a dessert thing. hot pocket. It's a dessert um, hot pocket. Here the question is: We're we're reading this, and it, and it does say it's the. It's the McCafe Oreo Oreo. Is, is it redundant? McCafe Oreo Oreo Thin Delight Menu. So is it like regular Oreos and Oreo Thins? Is there no, like I a think, different? I think like... it's Oreo Thins, but it's it's McCafe times Oreo. McCafe X Oreo is what they're saying is like the title of the main the main campaign. It's like this is a new cross promotion between these two entities, McCafe and Oreo, and the menu itself is called the Oreo Thins Delight Menu. Mm. I okay. I think that that is a stupid way to position it, but who am I to argue with the marketing wizards over at McDonald's? They've done That's a good true. job so far. Well, let's just let's just let's just take this 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 extra menu and, and dissect it for a quick moment. So they have two desserts, that being the tiramisu and the cheese tart, and then they said they have two beverages, which would the be the Oreo Chino. Which, which is, is available a cappuccino. Hot, hot or iced, okay. and the Oreo tiramisu latte. Also so the, available in hot yeah, or cold? Yeah, both drinks come topped with crumbled Oreo wafers. So that's four drinks in my have, opinion. Also have bits of Oreo mixed in. They might be going too far with the Oreos here. It might be too much. I feel like, uh, you remember we were talking about the Oreo baklava and we were saying how it's just to the limit of sweetness from the Oreos. And then uh, uh, my wife, uh, Bert, was arguing that um, the Oreo cream egg was a little too far over the Oreo limit. It was just a little too sweet. I would be afraid that what they just described there, Oreo tiramisu latte with cr crumbled Oreos and so bits much. of Oreos mixed in, that's a lot of Oreo right there. At that you... point... At that point, I think I would rather just have an entire sleeve of Oreos from the box. <laughs> with a coffee on the side. <laughs> with a coffee. With my own coffee. <laughs> I think I would choose that. I would even choose a McDonald's coffee. If they're worried about getting me to buy a product from them, I'm still down with the, Oreo, uh, with the uh, McDonald's coffee. They make fantastic coffees. Unbelievable coffee. So Shout out to McDonald's coffee, by the way. Just saying. While I think that this is maybe just a little bit of a novelty, at the end of the day, McDonald's very, uh, really has very few failed items i'm of the belief that this will probably be a success but i think it'll only be a success because it's capitalizing on what we had already mentioned which is this runaway oreo craze that's happening that's come back 
this resurgence of Oreo deliciousness. Yeah. yeah, it's back. They just wait until people forget about Oreos for a little bit, and then they're like, okay, it's time. We must strike yeah. now. Yeah, it's probably you're you're 100 right with that. Listen, every single one of these items, I would try. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you? At the very least, take pictures of them. I'd take pictures of all these things. Yes, and take at least a bite and a sip. Uh, what, one thing that I would actually very much like to try is the Oreo Chino because I'm a huge fan of the Tim Hortons iced cappuccino. Now, for those of you that aren't aware of what that is, it is a frosted beverage that uh, comes with uh, like a real chocolatey, syrupy cappuccino filling, uh, yeah, syrup, syrupy mixture. Uh, they, they blend it all together with the crushed ice or it's almost like a pureed ice uh and you have yourself a nice refreshing uh iced beverage very very sweet very very unhealthy but very delicious might as well eat a, eat a big mac at that point might as well eat a big mac i would be very curious to see if the oreo chino is even close to an ice cap or does it surpass does the oreo take it up that 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 one level that it needs to go to surpass the iced cappuccino i'd be curious in trying that i'm just saying you should probably just go and get a box of oreos and a and a, and a ice cap an ice cap and just diy that together. shit i'll just i'll just uh take out the food processor blend up a bunch of uh crush up a bunch of oreos yeah. and then put them into the blender with my ice cap it's not a terrible call i no, also definitely at that not. point i kind of i kind of i'm just interested in and in just making my own from scratch forget the mm-hmm. ice cap just just go at it myself why are you there you might as well just get a garbage bagel too <laughs> oh, I want a bagel so badly right now. Don't ever threaten me <laughs> with a garbage bagel. I need Anyways, those. I think it's safe to say that this uh this Oreo this will be a huge uh, McCafe success. Oreo delight menu is a great idea. I am jealous of Hong Kong, but hopefully in the years yeah. to come the trickle down effect will pop Well, no, into it won't North- be years though. The Oreo craze is going to wear off. And then it's going to we're going to be toast. We're one year on, one year off. They've got to bring it to us now. The time to strike McDonald's is now. Don't strike McDonald's. I'm saying McDonald's. Your time to strike is now. So, yeah, if you're just go on the Twitters and hit up McDonald's and be like, yo, I saw this Oreo menu. Can we have it in North America, please? Thanks. And then they'll do it. The time to strike is now. The the Oreo window is closing. Oreo window. Hmm. That's something. That's another thing. Okay, next topic. Uh... So the next topic is, that we have here is uh, Duff's POTUS cake. Now, Josh, why don't you give us a quick run through of what Duff's POTUS cake means? Okay, well, for those of you who don't know Duff Goldman, he is uh, the ace of cakes. He is a world-renowned baker, and he is known for uh, making over-the-top, ridiculously beautiful, and extremely detailed cakes. He has made, uh, you know, themed cakes for hot sauce companies. He's made uh, life-size human-looking cakes for celebrities. All around, I think he's probably the number one cake creator on the planet. He's just a real good cakesman. Yeah. Beyond that, he is an awesome dude. Dave, you know him. I know him very well. Uh, He's a super, super chill chill guy. Um, And... In uh, 2008, he was commissioned to create a uh, cake on the inauguration of the second term for President Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. The cake was beautiful. It was, I think, like four foot tall. It it was just an all-around really, really awesome cake. Fast forward four years, and the inauguration of uh, President Donald Trump, which was a couple days ago, he had a cake for his inauguration. The problem is it was exactly really similar the same cake. cake as Duff, except Duff didn't make it. And this struck up a ridiculous controversy over the internet. Whoops. I just want to show this cake to people who yeah, are show this, watching show live on Twitch cake. right now. These are the two cakes side by side. For those of you that uh, can't see it because you're listening to this podcast, uh, it is a multi-tiered cake uh, that the top the top portions have like little stars and 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 little star uh, uh, what would you call these uh, star wands almost sticking out of them. There's a middle section that's got what looks like presidential uh, uh, coins 
silver coins, and then the bottom layer has got the seal of the president of the United States with some some classic, uh, I don't know what you would call these, like little banners and, and, and whatnot. These are, you've seen these before in, in uh, government offices and things of that nature. Um, but really, side by side, they are, I mean, practically identical. Yeah, no, they are identical. Uh, actually, like they're the exact same cake. Now, there's been a lot of controversy. Duff posted this on his Instagram, and uh, the caption said something along the lines of, "This is the cake I made for Obama, and this is the cake that someone yeah, else yeah, made." Yeah, he, he wrote, "The cake uh, on the left is the one I made for President Obama's inauguration four years ago. The one on the right is Trump's. I didn't make it." And then he's got the little hmm, hmm. emoji. That little hmm emoji. That's true. And this, so this obviously, like, uh, you know, everyone went crazy with this and people really uh, uh, sort of uh, backlashed or lashed out at the baker that actually remade this cake. And then it came out that the uh, Duff actually connected with the baker. Yeah. And they discussed it. And she said that they wanted the exact same cake. Now, the question is, is that wrong? Like if they wanted her to make the exact same cake and they paid her to make the exact same cake and she is not claiming this cake as her own design, what, what is really wrong with that? I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. She addressed it. Furthermore, she then went out and said that all of the proceeds that are, that are coming in for donations for the cake or anything that has to do with the cake in terms of monetary value, she is donating to an LGBT organization, which I think is fantastic. Burn! S since then, uh, she has spoken with Duff. Duff has publicly said that he has no problem with this. And I think that's because she... She, she I guess, was tossed under the bus here. She was really she, tossed under the bus. She, it seems like she was tossed under the bus, but I think she handled it in a really good way. Yeah. And I know that her and Duff have no malice towards each other. Good. And she was just honest. Like she was commissioned to recreate. Yeah, exactly. She didn't do this being like, she didn't claim it was hers. Yeah. She addressed that it was his. She addressed that she was commissioned and paid to make the exact same cake. And that's, right. it is what it is. It's actually, it's, it's pretty flattering because- Obviously, Duff made an incredible cake. Yeah. Now it is suspect that, you know, you know how unoriginal can someone be to request the exact same cake? But that's a whole other topic of conversation, right? I also think that um, the biggest bummer about this whole thing is like, yeah, Duff's cake is ripped off, but there's so many copycat things these days, especially when it comes to like artistic or creative. Um, we can call them pieces. It's, I don't want to say that it's, it's ripping off, but it happens all the time where inspiration is drawn from. And now, yes, this is the exact same thing, but it's also a fine line between the two cases where it's just inspiration and it's full copycat. So you can't be too pissed off at it. Uh, you know, it happens all the time. People talk about it happening with comedians and jokes all the time. You just hear it and your subconscious brings it back out later. And it, while it looks like you're completely stealing a joke, but uh, it... it and oftentimes it isn't, and it was just something that was sitting in your subconscious from years ago. Um, I think that that can happen. The biggest bummer here is that why didn't, if you wanted the same cake, why didn't you just hire Duff to do it? You know, that could have been a nice payday for Duff. Was it maybe that Duff was too expensive and this girl undercut Duff? Did she say, oh, I'll make the exact same cake, sure, and I'll do it at half the price? It, it, is, that, it probably, is that what it came down to? It probably could have been a million and one different things. Yeah. Regardless, the outcome was what happened. Yeah. And I think it could have got uglier. And oh, it did without it. a doubt. Without and, a doubt. I, I yeah. definitely could have. And uh and and both uh the 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 person what was her name that made it? Where where does it say her name? We keep saying the woman, but I'd like to know her name. Uh doesn't doesn't say. So hang on, hang on, hang on. Um nope. Nope, does not say her name here, does it? That's okay. Oh, I don't think so. I guess she is from just... Washington, so she's local. Maybe that had to do with it. <laughs> I guess. Hold on. Her name is uh Well, local. Duff's from Baltimore, which is like the next town over. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty it's right? close enough. Anyways, it doesn't say her name. But either Maybe way. She... She made a great cake. <laughs> she made well. He made a great cake, and she, and she, she really good. She was really good, she's at, really good at, at, uh, at carbon copying it. Yeah. So here, here's the the uh, the bakery. It's called Buttercream 
Bake Shop. Buttercream Bake Shop, they are very good at making cakes. Her name is Regardless, Tiffany. Tiffany, regardless of whether or not it's an original cake. Either way, yeah. the bottom line is, really wish I could eat this cake. Looks so good. <clears throat> also, would be really hyped to just be able to say, I ate the president's cake. Yeah, totally. Like, regardless totally. of which president, I'm down to Paris. eat the president's cake. Yeah. Just be a really good story. Just be a really good thing to have on, uh, on your CV. You know, when you apply for a job, be like, what's your experience? Well, this Honorable one time. Honorable mention. This one time I ate the president's cake. Is that a euphemism it's, for something else? Or no, absolutely not. That is, uh, no, no, I, I ate his cake. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, sorry, Duff. Uh, way to go, Tiffany. Uh, the bottom line here is uh, cakes are awesome. Cakes are awesome. Uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. There you go. That's what I was looking for. You nailed she it. She exactly. seems to be really cool about it. And beyond that, Duff being a very cool guy is also very yeah, cool about it. Chill. So it's safe to say this, this is all good. Yeah. Next topic. All good. The Next dumb food topic. item of the week. And I like doing this every single week. This should be a new I segment agree. of ours. Uh, you know, this one we could say is brought to you by... Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> it's always brought to you by Oreos. Every week is brought to you by Oreos until they actually decide to sponsor us. Uh, today's dumb food item of the week. It's called the wino sipper. That's true. There it is. This there new is. wine glass will give you the whitest teeth and the best buzz. So for those of you that can't see what we're looking at, it's a little wine glass. And imagine, uh, what do you call that, that part? The stem? A spout. No, no, no. The stem of a wine glass, like a regular wine oh, glass. Oh, yes, yes. No, it's actually called the stem. You're right. It's called the stem, right? So yeah. imagine if they took the stem and they curved it upwards and made it into like a kind of a straw. Uh, they also gave the wine glass the bottom where the sort of the, the main part of the glass meets the stem. They gave it two little feet so it can stand up. So it's almost like a little tripod. So you could put it down if you need to and rest your wino <laughs> sipper. Um, the, the logic behind this, now, I all, honestly, I find this hard to believe, uh, but my wife brought something to my attention earlier that uh, leads me to believe that it, this statement is true. Sipping wine through a straw will reduce the wine stains to your teeth. It's now, science. Apparently, it's science, and the evidence that my wife suggested uh, to, to support that statement is that when people go for teeth whitening, for the next many weeks, they drink through straws so as to not undo the whitening. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I could also attest to this. Um, oh, you've had whitening before, have you? I No, no, no. But I know people that did Invisalign. <laughs> okay. Okay. Which is like uh, mouth guarded, uh, basically mouth guard uh, braces. It's like, it's like braces minus the brace. It just they it's a mouth guard instead of right. instead of braces, and in order to uh, not decay the teeth and uh, stain them and ruin the tray is what they're called the invisible the guard, tray the actual guard. If you're gonna drink, they want you to drink white wine so that it doesn't stain it, and if you're gonna drink red wine, coffee, beer, any type of brown or colored liquid, you want to go through a straw because then it doesn't hit your teeth, which we were talking about the other day. Right. Right. I feel like I feel like this will probably work so long as you really you really suck back through that straw and swallow quick. If you try and pull the old the old wine move of being a real a real uh, douchey wine conwasser and, you, you know, you want to swish it around in your mouth to get the full flavors of the sweet berry wine. I feel like. You're going to stain your teeth no matter what. This yeah. straw is, isn't doing shit. But if you just take it and you suck it back and you swallow right away, you cut to the chase, then I feel like it does stand a chance of not staining your teeth, which is perhaps why they call it the wino sipper. It's really for the person that's not trying to get the full flavor of the wine, that's just trying to get drunk. Yeah. And yeah. to that person, I tip my hat and acknowledge their importance within society. <laughs> the problem with this and the reason why it's so stupid, first of all, it looks really dumb. It looks this thing really is dumb. so 
stupid. It's just so stup- stupid. <laughs> it, 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 the, 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 t- the headline of this article being the new wine glass that will give you the whitest teeth. Like there's no crest white yeah. strip at the end of this no. spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not you're what not are you trying to fool here. That's you know? a really that's a bad that is a bad title for the article. Yeah. The, it should, it it should be like you the whitest really teeth stupid and the looking buzz. wine glass that it has a built in straw. That's what it should say. There's actually two lies in this title. It won't give you the whitest teeth because there's no teeth whitening properties within this. And it says and the best buzz. The glass will not give you a buzz. The contents of the glass will give you the buzz. You could take this glass and you could drink water with it. You're not going to get wasted. The thing is, is that, and I don't know if you know this, Dave, but apparently drinking alcohol, whether it's beer, uh, liquor, or wine through a straw, yeah. it gets you drunker, apparently. Because of the, really? it's like, it's more concentrated. It's like longer sips. There's, there's some sort of science behind that. I'm actually behind looking drinking at right from now. a straw. Yeah. Because if drinking through a straw is all it takes to have whiter teeth and get more wasted, how have I not been drinking from straws all this time? Now, I'd like to also point out that you should drink responsibly out there, folks. Uh, But if you are trying to get the job done, why aren't I sipping whiskey with a straw? Oh, because it's totally socially unacceptable. Yeah, you've never seen someone drink a beer with a straw? It's really dumb looking. Yeah, you want to beat them up. I think yeah. you have to, I think you are actually contractually bound. It's a, it's a it's a contract with society that if you see somebody drinking beer with a straw, you'll beat them up or at least punch them in the face. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you might not win the fight, but you're you're morally and contractually obliged to attempt to beat them up. At least so, score one sucker punch in the face. So I googled uh this is the sentence that I googled. Drinking alcohol with straw gets you more drunk? Question mark. <laughs> what, a, what a great Google search. You're so stupid. It's perfectly stupid. <laughs> and I came up with this. Proponents of the straw theory have two primary claims. <laughs> no, stop there. I just like that there are... Did it say proponents? Yes. Proponents of the straw theory. Yeah. Okay, First, continue. First, when drinking through a straw, people usually drink faster than if they were drinking regular. That makes sense. Because they are ingesting more alcohol in a shorter period of time, they will clearly get more drunk faster. Second, secondly, a straw creates a vacuum which eliminates oxygen. The feeling of intoxication is created in part because of the lack of oxygen entering us. I knew this, so yes. when we form a vacuum with a straw, we should naturally get more drunk. That even, is even science, less oxygen. Dave. So I that sounds like science to me, and I've made up enough science on this here stream uh, <laughs> to support uh, any sort of pseudoscience. Um, so it sounds reasonable enough that I believe it. The first part of it, I would argue, <laughs> I would argue to the death, and the reason being. There's no, there's no straw bigger than my own mouth. <laughs> You're tr- it's very true. A human's mouth is the big is is the last straw. <laughs> it's <clears throat> it's the last straw that the liquid is going to pass through before it goes into uh, your interior straw, which is your esophagus, and work its way down into your gut. Um, I mean, my mouth is pretty big, and it could definitely take more volume than this little straw here, than any little straw. So how can they suggest that more volume can be consumed through this little hole than if I was to just gulp it from the side of the glass? You okay? Think... Sounds like there's some sirens. Is everything all right, or are you under attack? Hold on, I'll put it on mute. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think you're 100% right. I think the whole theory behind that is the... Uh, anti-oxygen or the, the sure. increase of oxygen that's sure, that, going, that makes a right? lot of sense that makes a lot of sense but i think we could both agree that that first detail that the straw allows you to take more volume there's no chance in hell that's why i don't drink from straws i like to cut to the chase get right at it right from the side of the glass because you could just you could really kill a glass of anything way faster by just chugging it from the side than you can from a straw well that's just 
You know, you it's there- you don't if you're gonna ch- if you're gonna do if you're gonna chug beer, you never chug it from a straw. Can you chug from a straw? Exactly my point. So to suggest that you drink more alcohol faster through a straw, that just sounds like some real bullshit right there. That sounds like that sounds like real. That's that's just straight up hogwash, rather yeah. than rather than being pseudoscience. Yeah, it's definitely hogwash. Which, by the way, I hear if you chug hogwash, with the straw. <laughs> you get the most wasted. Only with a straw, though. You can only chug hogwash with a straw. I don't know. It, it, it really it, this 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 last paragraph ends off with a lot of science saying that uh, by creating a vacuum with a straw, the boiling point of alcohol falls, and alcohol vapors are what? created within the straw. Then Shut inhaled the with fuck up, I'm thinking, alcohol who, vapors. Who dr- drinks boiling alcohol? Like, get out of here. No, you know, that is I've, definitely, I feel like that's definitely a thing that people have done to get really exceptionally wasted is they just like put, put, put like wine on a pot and like stuck their face over the vapors. I think it's a really sick and twisted move. Um, and, and, and I'm, I'm, if you are that much of an alcoholic, I, I hope you will get the help that you, that you need, <laughs> but um, it could be done. Yeah, it could be done. By the way, just to uh, because I am very curious about what hogwash is as well. Did you just Google hogwash? I just Google hogwash, and it's just a synonym for cheap liquor. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's a so that. that's some uh, that's what I'm going to refer to it now. Anytime somebody brings up alternative facts, I'm just going to say that's real <laughs> cheap liquor right there. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that. That's real cheap liquor. Anyways, keep I guess the, the final word on the wino sipper. I'm never going to buy one. That's just no. stupid. But I would no. like to buy one for my friend MF Pally time because he likes to drink wine in ridiculous ways. And that's a oh, good and if you, way to drink if wine. If you can't find the wino sippers in your local uh, bodega or uh, or uh, whatever, uh, that store that had that fun, fun stuff. 7-Eleven. <laughs> no, no, no. The one there, uh, Spencer's Gifts, if you don't have those things, uh, just go to your local hardware store and grab a teapot. <laughs> just, drink, like a teapot. just drink it from a teapot <laughs> just drink it from that's a, a teapot. sick move i like that a lot because the wino sippers two of them are 24 dollars. that's ridiculous are that's a lot me? of money like i can uh, go to the dollar store and get a hundred glasses for 24 dollars. yeah yeah oh that's such a ripoff anyways that, that it's safe to say that was the dumbest food item or whatever of the week oh, yeah dumb. they did it they earned the spot Brought to you by Oreo cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on the menu, new V-Day treats. Now, I'm excited about this because every single year for Valentine's Day, the most uh, manufactured of all holidays, they release a whole new set of products that you've got to buy. It really otherwise, is. Otherwise, you can't tell your significant other or that special person in your life that you love them unless you spend money on them. By ways of chocolate. You know, you, you just, you just can't, you can't buy, you can't express love without chocolate. So let me just pull these up here for those of you that uh, are listening at home uh, and don't see what we're talking about. I'll describe them to you. The first item, this is, so this is Walmart exclusive. This, that's very important fact we should mention. These are exclusive to Walmart. Valentine's Day ca- uh, candies for 2017, including new white chocolate cheesecake M&Ms. Wow, by the way. They sound wow. very hype, and they sound like they would be able to accurately describe how much I care for another person. Yes, Assuming yes. I care for that person a whole lot. Yeah, you, basically what Walmart is saying is that you don't care about anybody until you buy them white chocolate M&M cheesecake. I mean, these are just really, these are nice looking. I mean, if there's one thing that M&M does very well, it's spin off varieties of M&Ms. They have a lot of good ones between uh, the original spin off, the peanut M&M, which I would argue is one of the greatest chocolate candies of all time. My favorite, by the way. Uh, just, just terrific. Nothing but good things to say. They did uh, M&M minis. They did, uh, you know, almond M&Ms. They did uh, 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 crunchy uh, peanut butter. Pretzel. Pretzel. They just have so many different varieties. Mint chocolate. I heard. I, I heard one uh, a little while ago. Car- caramel, caramel, Car- caramel uh, M and M's. There's yeah. no doubt in my mind that white chocolate cheesecake flavored M and M's are delicious. Uh, I would love to try them. 
and nothing says I love you quite like that. That's very true. Very true. I'm going to actually go and hunt these down because... Yeah. Darn tootin' these sounds good. A, darn tootin'. A <laughs> blend of cheesecake and Graham crackers uh, in a white chocolate center with a candy shell in Valentine's Day colors. So you know, you know that the love is real. And, and you have that Valentine's Day colors, which are the colors of love. I don't know if you guys know this. The colors of love are pink, light pink, and slightly off pink. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part about these m&ms with cheesecake is how sexy the green m&m is damn that green m&m looks good is that Mad the same hot. is it the same uh that's not the same female i don't want to i don't want to assume this m&m's gender or anything but i i am i correct in saying that the female m&m was not always green i'm she's pretty green sure she was here she's green in the picture here was that the one it was always her you talking about like that awesome commercial like where they're the having the sick yeah. house party? Yeah, it's like and live the action M&Ms. M &M. And the female M and M is there, <laughs> along with the male M and Ms and the attack helicopter M and Ms. And uh, I'm pretty sure she was always green. Was she? So they're sending real mixed signals here because <laughs> the the colors of love are clearly pink, light pink, and off pink. How could you possibly suggest that this green M and M? Is full of is full of love. Oh, that sounds terrible. Don't fill God. this green M&M up with your love. Either way, I want it. I want it bad. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to try them. I'm curious. Uh, unfortunately, I can't help but feel that just like every other M&M variety that ever uh, graces the, the shelves of a store, uh, I am always, always uh, going to pick peanut M&Ms 10 out of 10 times over all the others. Yeah, I... Peanut M and M's are those types of treats for me where I don't care that I'm going to have a stomachache. No, not at no, all. I don't care. Don't, about it. don't I'm, care. I'm doing. It. No. I'll continue to eat them forever. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, the next item that they have here: Hershey's conversation kisses, recordable message heart. So this is very much a gimmick. This is. Oh, yeah. This is them saying, okay, okay, okay. Maybe just maybe. Purchasing chocolates isn't enough. Maybe you actually need to use your vocabulary and express to the person that you love how much you love them. And since, yes. and since cell phones aren't available in, in many places. <laughs> that now, kisses are. They've now provided you with a box that you could record your message. These candies come in a record and play box to capture any Valentine's Day messages you'd like to include. The milk chocolates inside come wrapped in foil, sporting messages like hug me. XOXO, you're sweet. You're sweet, by the way, spelled Expect you are box, so. sweet. Because they couldn't, they couldn't fit the Y-O in there. So the let me get this straight. E. No, of course, there's not enough room. So let me get this straight. Not only does the chocolate say I love you, the recorded message that you've recorded says I love you, and then the actual kisses themselves have little messages on them that say I love you. So this is really the trifecta of sharing love, love, love sentiments, sentiments of love. Uh, this is stupid because a 10-ounce box is $15 US. Oh, my God. And it's only 10 ounces? Like... You're probably getting 10 chocolates. You're probably getting just a handful of chocolates, but you could record a message. That's so you know annoying. The problem you know, is that's... I would just end up using it to record a really offensive message. Yeah, it'd be so dumb. No one's doing it... this for, for real. It's like no, those... I, it's if like I was those to do it, I would... Record... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, you, go... no, you first. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> it's, like, it's like those really annoying uh, greeting cards that you could record your message that clearly no one ever did, ever. Yeah. That's what yeah. it's like. Except this I, one comes I, in a fun shaped box with, uh, with uh, message uh, Hershey kisses. I guess you know, back in the day when you're in elementary school or when you're in uh, you know primary school or whatever you want to call it, when you're young and you're giving you, your classmates when uh, you your choo -choo -choo choose someone, when you want to choo choo choose somebody, <laughs> uh, you you give them uh, Valentine's Day cards. In my opinion, I'd much rather a Hershey kiss with. Uh, you're sweet on it. <laughs> Come on. For yeah, that, absolutely. they got it. Like, absolutely. Your mom is going to go spend eleven ninety nine on a pack of 
uh, on a pack of uh, Valentine's Day cards where you're only getting four of them, four yeah. Valentine's Day cards, but like five of each. Yeah. Or, or your mom can get you the conversation box <laughs> from her. You just, you just give it to one special person. You take all the chocolate out of it and you record yeah. a message being like, whoops, sorry, but here, here, be my Valentine. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, this is so nice! All these chocolates in here, and then you press play on the record, and it's like, go fuck yourself, Susie. Yeah, you open up the box, and it's just the wrappers. <laughs> it's just the wrappers, no chocolate, <laughs> and it's got a real aggressive, hostile, hostile message. <laughs> That's what would end up happening. All these kids would fully take advantage of it. They would end up giving it to their buddies. You know, nobody would give it to like an actual Valentine. They would give it to their buddies with real profane messages in it, and yeah. I. You know what? I actually think that this is a brilliant idea. The, this nope. should be available in, in elementary and high schools all over the world. You know what would be so funny? So that kids could be telling each other to fuck off. Yeah, like you broke my heart, so I melted all these chocolates. And here's a box of melted chocolate. Here's a box of liquid chocolate, you idiot. <laughs> Thanks for breaking my heart. Here's a belt oh, box of good. melted chocolates. That's so good. Go, drink, go sip from this box. The final item on this list... So is dumb. these is these Skittles Valentine's heart shaped box? Now I'm really happy uh, that we included this because this just really illustrates how stupid a manufactured holiday like Valentine's Day is. Uh, as you know, I've always been an opponent of the uh, Valentine's Day as a whole. Uh, my wife and I have never have never celebrated. And I use air quotes, have never celebrated Valentine's Day ever once. Uh, we are anti-Valentine's Day every year. We both recognize that we will never uh, love each other because a bunch of companies and organizations suggest that we should. We will love each other because we fucking love each other. It's actually nothing, one of my favorite things about you guys that I use. No, we've right never bought, we've never purchased flowers, never bought her chocolates. Uh, she's never bought me anything, and we both love it. We're both very happy and secure in our relationship, knowing that we love each other because we do, and not because somebody else is saying we should. This illustrates that the most because there is nothing different about this product. This is a plain Skittle. There's nothing different about it. They recognize that the Skittle is one of the greatest candies of all time. Why change something that isn't broken? So what we'll do instead is we'll put the make the box heart-shaped and allow you to use it as a Valentine's card. Which really, all that this is doing is increasing the price of Valentine's Day cards. All it's doing is getting people to spend more on their Valentine's Day cards. Whereas a card is probably, like you said, you could probably buy a 10-pack for 5 bucks, right? Give them out to 10 friends of yours that you want to say, Hey, have a happy Valentine's Day and I really care about you. But... This is for one person exclusively. So if you wanted to get it to 10 people, you're dropping 50 bucks. Yeah. And realistically, all you need to do is go and buy a pack of Skittles and then go get like uh, a post-it note, cut it yeah. into, a, into a heart, Absolutely. stick it onto the pack, say yeah. to Dave from yeah. Josh. Yeah, and, and, it says, and it says, I chew, chew, choose you. And chew is spelled <laughs> C-H-E-W. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. You know what? I forget it. I don't even want to talk about this topic anymore. Valentine's Day is so stupid. And these are just another stupid ways to make money. And you know what? If you really stood by these products and thought they were that awesome, I dare you to sell them all year long. Go well, on, Skittles. Beyond, beyond Go on, that, M&Ms. The M&M one, that's actually yeah, that's probably delicious. a smart thing. They yeah, did keep it, it they all the time. You don't need it for Valentine's Day. It doesn't need to be exclusive. No. I feel like of all of these products, not I feel, I could say with, with great confidence that uh, beyond these white chocolate cheesecake M&Ms, neither of the other products are going to survive past uh, Valentine's Day because they are too Valentine's Day exclusive. Yeah, I They really put themselves, back themselves into a corner here. Limited time to sell these products. And that's, 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 that's got to be costly. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not interested. However, you can bet your bottom dollar, Dave, <laughs> that I'm going to go and seek out those yeah, white chocolate are, cheesecake m &Ms. Stay tuned to Josh's Instagram over the next couple of weeks as all of these Valentine's Day products roll through. Also, you better Snapchat recording into the Hershey's conversation. You better record a very offensive message and give it to uh, the West Coast Slapper, please. <laughs> The the biggest problem here, Dave, is I have to go and find a Walmart in LA, which is like there's like one. 
It's true. It's true. I feel like you have to drive pretty far for that. Yeah, I gotta go to Pacoima. <laughs> remember, remember Pacoima, Dan? I mean, no, I've never been there, but I uh, I know of it. <laughs> Who could forget Pacoima? Um, all right. Bottom line: Fuck you, Valentine's Day. From the yeah. bottom of my heart, fuck you. From the bottom of Dave's black heart. Next on the docket, McDonald's making some changes to the Big Mac. But only in Canada, Dave. Only in Canada. Now, that's daring. That's a gutsy move. Gutsy play, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. I think that I think that it's very gutsy because this is a classic uh, menu item, one of the most world-renowned menu items, right? Uh, maybe, maybe even the most. Is it possible that the Big Mac is the most recognized food item? I think you're onto something. I think the Big Mac is probably the 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 most recognizable fast food item on the no, history no, no, of no. the planet. No, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying not uh, fast food without a doubt. I'm saying food in general. I'd say pizza branded, is the most brand, recognizable. Brand, brand, food. Branded food. Sorry, branded, branded food. food. Fair enough. Yes, branded you're right. food. You're very right. If, yeah, yeah. I mean, like if you were to look at a burger versus a pizza, it's just a stupid game because everybody could look at it and be like, yeah, that's a burger, of course. Yeah. And oh exactly. yeah, that's pizza. Absolutely. No, I'm saying branded items. Like Two not everybody's gonna look patties. not everybody's gonna look at a Domino's pizza and think Domino's. that's a Domino's pizza. <clears throat> They're gonna look no, at it and be right. like, is this little Caesars? And I'll be like, no, stupid. They don't have deep dish with bacon and pepperoni, you stupid person. Uh, but the Big Mac, there's no mistaking it. You look at it and you're like, that is that is you just a classic. Is. Two all beef patties. Uh, special sauce. How's, how's Lettuce, it? Keep, it, keep it going, yeah. Pickles. Yeah. yeah. Onions. Cheese. Onions. Two, on a sesame special sea sauce. bun. On a sesame sea bun. Now, it's not just those ingredients. In Canada, they have bacon. I have, a, I have, have, a, bacon. I have a problem with this, personally. Oh, <laughs> Why? Number one. First of all, number one. <laughs> first things first, number one. Um, go. Is number one. Yeah. Uh, uh, McDonald's bacon is subpar to fast food, other fast food bacons, in my opinion. I would definitely agree with you with regards to Wendy's. Never had a and I've had, uh, oh yeah, way better than Burger King. Uh, way better than Burger King. Burger King I had recently uh, was just, was dust. I'm just not about Burger King at all. Yeah, I'm just yeah. not about it. I don't so like let's it. say let, let's say that it's in the realm of very very poor fast food bacon's. Yeah, I mean, I guess it comes down to how you like your bacon. What I've noticed with with McDonald's bacon is that it, it's not soft nor crunchy. I mean, sorry, no. it's not soft nor crispy. It's no, crunchy. It's just- yeah, it's like somewhere in a weird place where it's, like it's the microwave weird. has got to it too many times. It's almost yeah. like they cooked it in the microwave. They didn't cook it in in an oven or on a pan and then freeze it for transportation to the restaurant. It's almost like they cooked it in a microwave like at the restaurant for the first time. Yeah, and you know weird. this bacon's coming out of a drawer. Yeah, definitely out of a drawer. It's kind of dehydrated. Uh, it's really it, it's not it's not particularly great bacon. Like I will I will pick Wendy's bacon. 10 out of 10 times over McDonald's bacon. That is for sure. Oh, not even but a you, question. But you were going to say your second your second point about this, your second problem with this. My second problem about, about this is why are you messing with the Big Mac? It's, yeah, it's already perfection. so delicious. It's like, perfection. You're, 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 you're fundamentally changing what is a delicious, a delicious equation. Like mm-hmm. you're completely you're, – it's, it's almost you – know, you know what I compare this to? It's like taking your favorite slice of pizza and making it whole wheat. Oh God! It it's it's well, the same is ingredients. It is it because you do that in the hopes of making it healthier? Whereas, I mean, you're not you're not making anything healthier by adding bacon to it. You're making no, you're it not. better. You're hopefully making it better, but you're not making it healthier. You're fundamentally changing yeah, the yeah. entire No, I totally, I totally agree. That it's, it's, it's a change that is – like if your favorite pizza is a pepperoni pizza, then why would you have an all-dressed pizza? Like you're not going to order an all-dressed pizza if your favorite is pepperoni. The extra ingredients, while on paper make it seem like it should be better, it's, it's not. It's not as good as just a plain pepperoni pizza. I think it's closer to that analogy, which is, still isn't a very good analogy. We're both kind of, kind of dumb, but I, I feel that mm. – you're right. Why would you try and fix perfection? And the Big Mac is 
uh, fast. I would argue it is the closest thing to fast food perfection, not necessarily just because of the flavor or the price or, uh, you know, the overall uh, look and feel of the burger. I would say that it's fast food perfection because it's such a legendary burger and has withstood the test of time and is practically unchanged throughout all of that time. It's pretty much unchanged, like 100%. Yeah. The thing is, so I don't know if you know this, but apparently um, apparently they are coming out tomorrow. There's a big announcement on uh -oh. January 26th in big America. Announcement. Big McDonald's and announcement? Big McDonald's announcement. And allegedly it's, uh, I don't know if you heard this, Dave, or anybody listening, is that they're coming out with three sizes of Big Macs. So the small, medium, and the large Big Mac. Ooh. Did you hear about this? Well, this was this was part two of our Big Mac discussions. Oh, whoops! That's so okay. My, but that's, uh, but that's, think, that's for the rest of the world, right? That's not just. I think that's, that's just not America. just for Canada. No, that's the thing is that I don't I don't think Canada is going to be coming out with that so fast. As you know, the whole like McDonald's does things different in different geographical locations. As we were talking about right, the Oreo menu right, right, earlier, right. and I think that this is just Canada's uh, caveat to the sizes of Big Macs. Like, oh, well, we're, we're doing something with our Big Mac too and we're putting bacon on it. The biggest problem I have with this is that we, you and I, have put bacon on a Big Mac before. And why are they all of a sudden making it a menu item? You can always add bacon to anything you want in McDonald's. Why yeah. are they just wrapping this up and trying to like, uh, you know, present it to the world as right. this revolutionizing what we already love, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I, and I feel like with regards to these new, to these new items, um, I think it's like the bacon, I'll always look at it as like, I would rather bring this Big Mac home and make two strips of bacon in a pan and throw it on this burger by myself rather than have the McDonald's dusty bacon. Um, Ugh. But the different sizes, I'm, I'm actually, at first I'm like, again, it's the whole argument about perfection. Why would you fix, try and fix perfection? But just looking at this advertisement, so the, the three different sizes are the Mac Junior, the Big Mac, and the Grand Mac. Now, the Big Mac obviously being the standard unchanged Big Mac. The Mac Junior is half a Big Mac, and the Grand Mac is a wider bun and a wider patty with the rest being the same toppings. So I think that's pretty cool because it's just more Big Mac. I never liked the double Big Mac. People, Some people were always really down with the double Big Mac. So that's four patties instead of two. I've always felt that the ratios got thrown off. Just yeah, maybe so it's big. Just, maybe it's just the stacking of the two patties, one on top of the other. Maybe it's, uh, it, it's, it's the overall ratio of bread to, to beef to topping. Something about it was just too much. Not as good as a standard Big Mac. I would have chosen uh, to have two Big Macs over one double Big Mac. Whereas Whoa. the Grand Mac, I think, which I wouldn't have done, by the way. I never, I, I don't, that's not, I don't think that's something that I ever did. I'm not a, who do you think I am? I'm not, like like right I'm not a fucking sicko. Trust me. I swear <laughs> to God. I've never had two Big Macs before. Trust me. Whereas the Grand Mac seems like it's the same ratios uh, in the Mac itself, but also, um, you know, you've, you've got that same thickness of patty, which I believe is what makes the Big Mac so great altogether. I feel like the Grand Mac is something that I really want to get down with. I, uh, I'll i definitely try it. The, the, the Mac Jr., I mean, we've been doing that for years. You get the two, double, the two cheeseburger combo and you dress them as Big Macs, boom, yes. you, got a, you got a Mac yes. Jr. Although I feel like it's probably, oh yeah, it's probably the same. It's definitely not a quarter pound, right? Well, no, you, the thing is, when you did that that hack, that McDonald's yeah. hack with the two, you, never, hack, yeah. you didn't get the sesame seed bun. You know, you didn't right. get that. I guess the sesame seed bun is the biggest difference, whereas I feel like that's borderline not necessary. Yeah, it's neither here nor there. It doesn't, like, make or break the sandwich, just to be honest. This is going to be on the wow. 26th of January, which is tomorrow. I'm very curious to see if this is going to be in Canada or if it's going to be exclusively in the United States. Uh, I would very, very much like to try that Grand Mac just to see if my theory is correct in that it's the same ratios, the same flavors, the same consistencies, just more Mac. 
Should I go um, tomorrow and get yeah, three you, three Big Macs or what? Absolutely should. You should try them all out and you should really compare and contrast. And also if they I don't know if they still have it, but the double Big Mac, I'd be very curious to see um, you know, how much better or worse the double is to the Grand Mac. Maybe I should get a double Big Mac and a Grand Mac and side Ooh. by side compare. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. We, and you should check out what's under the hood. You should check out what they look like. Are they going to put in more effort to making the Grand Mac because it's a limited time new menu item, uh, uh, a new take on a classic? Are they going to be extra careful to make sure that this burger is built to perfection? You know, sometimes McDonald's gets real sloppy with the assembly of their burgers, and it's usually the interest of the of the person that's making the burger, whether or not they actually care about what they're they're doing that'll determine how good that burger is i feel like because it's limited time they're going to put extra they're going to be extra stringent or extra careful with their employees to make sure that their employees really go the extra mile to make a nice a nicely organized designed burger yeah i want to see that's why i'm going to go right away and get it to see if yeah. uh, if like they care that much i know? feel like they i feel like they will for for something like this because it's limited time i mean i guess listen bottom line is uh i i like the idea uh, I'm I'm not so excited about the prospect of changing up something classic like the Big Mac, uh, but I am very much down with this Grand Mac. I think the Grand Mac is an exciting prospect because there's some times when I'm I'm leaving the bar at three in the morning and I need to have a snack and I'm going to go for the Big Mac. And oftentimes the Big Mac is just not enough. You there just want are, a couple more bites. There right, are Dave? bigger burgers. Like if you were to go get a, a Baconator, for example, that is a bigger burger. Uh, By far, delicious burger. and if you get the, uh, uh, I don't know the, I don't know how many people know about this move, but I like to get the Baconator all dressed like a double cheeseburger that they have. So you get the lettuce, the tomato, the onion, the pickle, and all of the condiments that you get on the regular mm -hmm. Wendy's hamburger. It takes the the Baconator to the next level. So it's the same patties, the bacon, all that jazz that you're nice and used to, but it's also got all the toppings of of the standard Wendy's burger. I personally think that that is a bigger burger, a more, um, a more, a more voluptuous filling. patty. It's definitely a more voluptuous. I think it's also more expensive, but it really satisfies all cravings. Whereas sometimes a Big Mac by itself, I still got to steal like two or three chicken nuggets from my wife, you know? Yeah. I um, couldn't agree more with you. I've never done the extra ingredients on a Baconator. Personally, you should try that. It's a I've been move. I've been doing Wendy's no vegetables for years. Like before the Baconator was even a thing, uh, and they had the Big Bacon Classic. Yeah, I was yeah. usually getting the Big Bacon Classic no vegetables. I'm yeah. I just like that. No, and I also I respect that, but uh, pr that was primarily because back then I found that Wendy's burger ingredients kind of sucked. They've recently, and I don't know if this is the states uh, the same in the, in the United States of America, uh, but in Canada, the the toppings are so much better than they once were. You actually get fresh toppings, and they actually fit the burger nicely. So I, I implore you, Josh, give that a revisit. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have and, to try and, and do that, that. And I would say, depending on the price point of this Grand Mac, that might be the comparison. That might be the fair comparison. Maybe not, maybe not a Baconator, but the Wendy's double cheeseburger. Maybe. I personally, Wendy's has always been my favorite fast food. I know you're a, an A&W man yourself. No, Wendy's um, on like the global scheme. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wendy's really holds it down. So yeah. I would like to compare those two, Grand Mac and the Baconator, or sorry, and the Double Cheeseburger, and uh, compare price points. Yeah, it's not and, that And that would, be the, that would be the head to head that I would like to see. My money would still be probably on the Wendy's burger, just because of the freshness <laughs> of the patty and the toppings. But gotta respect the Big Mac. All right, so I'm, I'm doing it tomorrow. Grand Check Mac. All right, your boy. Next topic. Next. Inside Nutella. Oh. This is a scary thing. This is a scary thing. Scientists reverse scienced Nutella and found that they may or may, it may or may not be pretty bad for you. 
Yeah, all these years, we all thought Nutella was just a really healthy chocolate spread. I don't know, but I don't think anybody did ever think it was really healthy. And I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember, there was there was also like a big uh, there's a big lawsuit. controversy. There's a big yeah lawsuit. That woman, she was giving her kids or some. I I didn't read all. I don't remember exactly what it was years ago. That woman fed her kids Nutella every meal of every day, and now her kids are all sick. And she's like, "What do you mean? They say that it's a great meal supplement." That yeah, is not. They got you. None of that is true. None of it is true. They got her. They tricked her real good. How come I can't pull up the? I'm trying to pull up the actual. They show the layers of what's in it, and it's just not. It's not pulling up. But it turns out that it's. They, they're suggesting it's got a ton of palm oil in it, and the palm oil, uh, is carcinogen, carcinogen, carcinogenic, carcinogen, carcinogenic, uh, claims that its palm oil ingredient could be carcinogenic. And now a, an image uh, has been going viral of what is in Nutella. So let's, let's show this over here to everybody. You For got those that of graph? you that are watching at home, those of you that are watching at home and can't, uh, listening at home rather, and can't see what we're looking at, this is a jar of Nutella. And it's as if somebody layered the ingredients inside a jar of Nutella just to illustrate how much is actually hazelnut how much is actually cocoa? So I would say about a quarter of this jar is palm oil, and the other half of the jar is processed sugar. And then the then, balance of it. Then that other quarter is divided almost e- evenly between skim milk powder, What's cocoa, that? and hazelnuts. What is so you're pretty much, powder? when you eat this, you are pretty much just eating palm oil and sugar. Now... Here's my question. This, you know, this this picture goes viral. Is this anything that people couldn't have already discovered on their own? I think it's a classic case of see no evil, hear no evil. Like people just not reading the ingredients. People being they so dumb to say, oh, it, they say it's healthy, then it's got to be healthy. And you yeah. just go at it. You know when people are like, don't, don't, like, look, when you're climbing something high and, like, don't look down? Same yeah. type of difference. You know, you're eating this, <laughs> don't look at the ingredients. Right. Just you know trust I mean? us. Trust us. We're telling you that it's healthy. But it tastes delicious. That's enough. I guess that's the point of this, this story altogether is that for those of you that still think that Nutella is healthy for you, for those of you that think that Nutella is a good uh, addition to every meal and part of a balanced diet um it's not there is nothing in this thing that's healthy what like hazelnuts are hazelnuts good for you uh are hazelnuts by themselves good for you apparently personally i am allergic so so you 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 can't even really weigh in on this because you've never even tasted nutella Oh no no! I have tasted Nutella. I it's a you know my new al- my new allergy. It's, yeah. a, it's a newer it's a newer thing. It's a newer thing. It's, it's a, a recent thing. development so in Josh's it. life. This is allergy. I used to eat Nutella, um, yeah. and it was delicious. But it for the for years, I I never knew that it was hazelnut. I just thought it was Reg's chocolate. Right. And then and then I realized it was hazelnut. Apparently, hazelnut's good for you. It's a tree nut. It's got protein in it. I'm sure there's other f- healthy bits. Perhaps maybe not. I don't know. Either way, way, if hazelnut is the only healthy thing that's within this product, that's a lot of bullshit surrounding that tiny healthy layer. Um, So good for you, Nutella. You did it. You proved uh, the age old saying that, uh, uh, you know, corporations love to lie to you to get you to buy their products. I I think that's exactly how the saying goes. Um, It was originated by the classic snake oil salesman. Yep. And, uh, uh, it, it stands true and continues this to this day. The thing is that the Ferrero, who is yeah. uh, the manufacturer, Ferrero. 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 which is the manufacturer of Nutella and also, by the way, those delicious uh, Ferrero Rocher uh, chocolates. Yeah. Um, they're claiming that the labeling on their products enable consumers to make informed choices to help ensure that Nutella oh my God. can be enjoyed as quote? a as a balanced diet, part of a balanced diet. Yeah. One of Ferrero's core nutritional beliefs is that small portion sizes help people to enjoy their favorite foods in moderation. (laughs) Cigarettes are good for you so long as you only have one a year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I don't know. I think that 
it's a it's a classic case of uh uh duffing the stats is that was that is that a thing is that a it is now fudging that's better fudging fudging, fudging the stats <laughs> you, you see what i did there Nutella, fudging it's not even fudge though it's horrible <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, listen, here's the deal. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of sugar. People know this. You know you're not making a chocolate hazelnut spread without adding a lot of sugar. What yeah. concerns me so much is is how little chocolate and hazelnut are actually in this. Right. You know? Like it's so it's so monopolized it's by palm oil and sugar. It's kind of like a like like a like a Coca-Cola or a or exactly. a Pepsi or a Pepsi Cola. Yeah. These these beverages are primarily sugar and filler. There's not much substance to them, let alone nutritional uh, benefits or any anything that's really that healthy. And I think where they get people time and time again is they show a commercial of uh, you know a bunch of kids sitting down to breakfast, and these are all you know slim healthy looking children and they're all smiles and they're all excited as they dive into like six pieces of toast slathered lathered up in 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 nutella um it suggests to the parents that oh you should probably give this to your kids because not only will it keep them nice and healthy but it'll also keep them happy look at this look at this this commercial right here they're super happy and don't you want your kids to be happy and i think that that was part of the illusion that convinced people that nutella's healthy but since when is a diet based, or at least even one meal of a diet based on chocolate, good for you? Yeah, no, or, it's never. Or a, or never a treat. Case. Or a treat. It's like nobody ever can. Nobody ever uh, thought for a second that pop tarts were good for you as a breakfast. Like if you have breakfast pop tarts, that's good for you. No, I don't think there's anybody that ever ex didn't accept the fact that what they were eating was essentially just cookies and frosting, right? Yeah, you're eating a piece of pie for breakfast. It's like cookie crisp. The cereal itself uh, is is not, there's nothing healthy about that either. You're literally just having cookies and milk for breakfast and calling it breakfast. You can convince yourself that it's a cereal. You can convince yourself that there's some nutritional benefits to it, but I think you're stupid and wrong if you think that. I no concur. offense to anybody listening to this podcast that thinks that cookie crisp is part of a balanced breakfast. And no offense uh, to you if you're consistently eating Nutella for breakfast, but sorry to tell you, it's not sorry to, sorry to be the ones to break it to you, but this is not good. Yeah, not this good, is not at, good all. at all. And now this, this diagram will illustrate that. This so, diagram will illustrate that for you. So the diagram, the diagram being that what you're eating is mostly palm oil and sugar. Good and just for everyone, it's not pronounced Nutella. It's pronounced Nutella. 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 Like nuts. Nutella. Like nuts. It's right. It's right. It's got hazel newts in it. Yeah. Hazel newts. So that's why they call it Nutella. Um, cool. Final thoughts on Nutella. Uh, I'll probably still eat the jar that's in my cabinet. Why? Because I'm an idiot. Also, <laughs> I like to do things that are bad for me. Also, I don't typically listen to my own advice. <laughs> How about you, Josh? Oh, yeah, you can't even eat it. I'm You're allergic. Die, so, yeah, you can't so even have it. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> make my own, I'll make my own Nutella with peanuts. Peanutella. Ooh. How did I not bad. figure that one out yet? Yeah, that's... I hate that the, the only nuts you can have is peanuts. It's weird. What is your life cashews like? Cashews and pistachios. Oh, cashews too. are pretty... Cashews are good. Yeah. Pistachios are good. Yeah, that, that works. Yeah, those are good ones. Um, cookie dough Kit Kats. These Love. are new Kit Kats that are being developed. Cookie dough. Love cookie dough, love Kit Kats, stands to reason I would love cookie dough Kit Kats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how could you not? I don't know why, but I feel like I've, I've, I've seen this before. I feel like we get all of these delicious, like, uh, hybrid chocolate bars in Canada, but they don't get it in the States. And the for, all, States the, of for all of you that know this... Yeah. The, the the chocolate bar game in Canada is that shared with the far, UK and it's far, far superior than far any stronger. other yeah. any other countries in the world in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's one thing that we've always really loved. It is the uh it is the chocolate bar, the candy bar, all candies in general. We have just been exceptional at uh, providing incredible variety. And now uh, we've got the Kit Kat uh, cookie dough. It's a Kit Kat chunky. It's important to note, right, Josh? It is a Kit Kat chunky. It is not the standard Kit Kat where you break off the pieces. You, you don't yeah. give this one a break. No, you don't. <laughs> uh, this is a chunky, which is just a standard 
candy bar, but with a cookie dough interior. I feel like there's no way that this can be bad, considering it still has the classic Kit Kat wafer, which makes a Kit Kat a Kit Kat. Um, if you'll notice, it's got the classic wafer, and then it's got a full layer of cookie dough inside the chocolate. I was afraid originally that it would be the classic wafer, but the exterior chocolate would have been replaced with some kind of cookie dough exterior. Uh, but they already did that with cookies and cream, right? Yeah, that's and that's just like whatever. This this looks like it's yeah, soft it's and gooey cookie dough on the inside of it. It yeah. looks like I don't know if it actually is. I feel like there's nothing. There, this this is this is right. This is smart. This is right. There is nothing stupid about this. But the whole the whole brand the whole branding and message of breaking me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar is somewhat lost. <laughs> it looks like, but it is a chunky, right? So. I guess that is that, true. That the Chunky never claimed to be breaking off a piece of uh, taking a break, I guess. Never, never once. Um, right. I, I, I would try the shit out of this. I mean, oh, I don't yeah. see why Heck this yeah. could ever be bad. Uh, yeah, you should uh, probably go one. to like Bulk Bar. Give me today. one right now. They don't have them yet, they have do they? There. I don't know, oh, man. Is, I mean, this like, is four months yeah. ago. Spotted in the UK. Like, it might yeah. be when so it's that in, was the in the UK. It might be in Canada. Now it might be in Canada. It was in the UK in December. Oh, yeah. It's totally in Canada. I would say mosey on down to uh, Bulk Barn. Yeah. Probably. This picture here on uh, that's posted here uh, of an Instagram of I Should Start Lifting. That's a friend okay. of ours. Yes, he is. He's the man, that guy. Yes, and he Killed took it. an ex excellent. So this one is actually the Give Me a Break version. No, it's not. Look at the bottom. And that little wrapper, it says Chunky right there. No, I know you. Oh, yeah. So this is just a four so it pack. comes in four packs. This yeah. is just a four pack. I got deceived. And also the way he's holding them with his fingers also deceived. Yeah. Shout out to I Should Start Lifting. If you guys want to follow him on Instagram, he posts awesome like, uh, like Food picks. Uh, store bought. Yeah. Store bought snacks. Yeah. Also yeah. A little bit. But his store bought snacks are really, really hype. Really Just, tremendous. If this cookie dough is actually gooey. Yeah. If it's than, that's, like, I guess cookie. that's the big thing. Yeah. It's got to be real cookie dough. Yeah. I'm down with it. It can't it be no delicious. bootleg cookie dough. It's got to be the real dill. I'm just not about that bootleg cookie dough. I'm sorry. You know, and the other thing, though, forget just bootleg. I find that cookie dough is one of those things you could be, like, going in super hard on cookie dough, and then you hit the wall very, very quickly. Like, all of a sudden, you'll just, you'll just be done. You can go yeah, around, like, when like, you're eating cookie dough ice cream, you get, like, yeah. one. You're like, ooh, that was good. You go, and you, like, look for no, the other one, going. and then you're like, eh. Dude, you, no, you keep going. No, I find, like, cookie dough ice cream. Like, I'll eat half a tub of cookie, cookie dough ice cream. I'll be like, man, this is the best ever. I could keep going. And then it's just one spoonful that makes me stop, reevaluate my entire life, look in the mirror, take a long look in the mirror, and be like, Where, why, Dave, have you become this kind of person? Why are you such a scumbag loser? <laughs> Oh, and the relationship you, you have go, with your appetite, Dave, is second to none. You go from you go from one hundred to zero real quick with cookie real dough. Real quick, real quick. <laughs> and I'm, I'd be afraid. I'd be afraid that that's what this Kit Kat chunky cookie dough would do for me or to me. In that, I would uh, I would be feeling real great, and then I would hit that wall. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But alas, if yeah, found, I try it. We'll consume. Yeah, I gotta. We gotta try and find it. I mean, sure, it's in the UK, but let's get it here in Canada, right? Hold on, I'm just gonna look it up real quick to see if it exists. Yeah, because if it's by you, you definitely need to go get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, 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 I do. Um, hmm. how about this, Dave? What? Looks like you're gonna have to go and make a couple purchases today. Really? Walmart.ca. Holy. Wow. Out. Looks like I gotta go to Walmart. I didn't realize Walmart that I was gonna has go to Walmart. So many crazy Kit Kat things. <laughs> so Kit Kat thing orange, to... Kit Kat mint, Kit Kat peanut butter. Next thing I want to do the next time we do one of these podcasts, if there's an item on this menu that exists, we've got to try it. We've got to have it for the podcast so we could review it at the time. And I'll buy a four pack and just keep eating Kit Kat chunkies until I hit that wall and let you know how that wall how it feels. How quickly would that wall be attained uh, with a chunky Kit Kat? Yeah, do it. Cookie dough. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> no. Okay, no, they don't have it there. Oh, they All right, don't. We'll, have we'll hunt it down. We'll hunt it down. But we gotta, we'll what we got to do is for the next one, we got to do our research so, so that we can see if we could get any of these things in advance. That would be really yeah. important, I think. Definitely. So uh, moral of the story is if you guys see uh, and can consume the cookie dough Kit Kat uh, chunky please holler at us let us know how it tastes because it looks magical 
Yeah, it does. It really does. It. Um, next up on uh, this here docket, FDA and serving sizes have been have been changed. FDA serving sizes. They have been changed. Uh, and this is the recommended serving sizes, right? You know, when you look at the the side of a package and it says serving size of of whatever it is that you're whatever it is that you're consuming. Yeah, and for all of you that don't know, the FDA is the Food and Drug Administration, which uh, you know creates serving sizes and likes. But also, like I think it also like approves or rejects different foods for the market, or or tells people that this is healthy, this you can't eat. Um, yeah, bans yeah. certain products within the United States of America. Precisely, um, it'll look at something and say we're okay pushing the limits of how unhealthy something could be, but you, sir, have pushed too far. Your product can fuck right off. <laughs> You've so gone too far with this one. <laughs> too far. So the FDA has decided to change what the recommended serving size is, and drum roll, please, they have increased <laughs> the serving sizes. So now gone ahead and said, well, listen, people are eating more than what we suggest anyways. Let's just get with the times and increase the serv serving sizes. So now, uh, so now a pint is only three servings as opposed to four. <laughs> Which is crazy. <laughs> or 270 calories. Versus 200. Versus 200. So now what they consider to be normal consumption is more than what it used to be. So the question I have, I guess, is <clears throat> is this a result of evolution or is this a result of people not being able to control the serving and portion sizes that they consume? Or is it a business move? Well, yeah, I mean, that's no matter what. That seems to me that they're like, yeah, well, we'll just, we'll be able to sell people more this way. Or we'll be able to, yeah, I guess it makes it more, right? I guess it, it allows you to be able to sell more to people and convince them that they need more if there are more people. Yeah, right? My evolution argument is that humans have just been getting bigger and stronger and more and more intense every generation. People are, people are really intense now. And thus have to consume more, obviously. They need more. I was uh, as a quick, quick little anecdote. I was um, filming a video the other day for a hockey team, and there was a man who was at the first game of this hockey team of this hockey franchise in the '60s, and he had a jersey from the '60s. If you compare the size of that jersey uh, for a grown a grown human being, that jersey would not even fit on a 13 year old man today, boy today, not even yeah. close. Now, was that the result of uh, excess laundry or just, you oh, know, you mean like leaving it, in, leaving it in the dryer for too yeah. long? <laughs> They've just washed this thing too much. That's a good point. I guess it could be the uh, laundry and, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, clothing care is, is definitely more advanced these days. But I, I'd have to believe that how drastic the difference was in a jersey between uh, today and yesteryear. Uh, is so drastic because people are just they're just made they're just made for tough these days. <laughs> yeah, they are made for tough. Um, I noticed that too, though. I noticed also football jerseys back in the day were smaller, and basketball uniforms were a lot tighter. I think everything yeah. and 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 the the human athlete has just gotten genetically larger. Yeah. So right. I suppose then uh, if they are adjusting this, I would like to believe that this is a result of the fact that people just need more calories and need more serving sizes, uh, more serving. Need bigger serving sizes to, in order to be fulfilled, in order to sustain themselves. What I'm afraid of is that this is going to encourage people to consume even more and will, um, you know, make obesity even more runaway than it already is. Although I don't know how much people are actually like, do, do you ever look at something and think like, Oh, uh, the serving size is, is this, so I'm only going to eat this much or you just go in on how much you want until you're satisfied. Uh, it really depends on what I'm consuming. I think that I always like to, like, I always check just to know if it says like there's 20, 270 calories in right. one serving and I just had, and one serving is, you know, 14 chips and I just had 30 chips. I just want to mentally do the math and be like, oh, I just consumed insert amount of calories here for fun. It doesn't right. change what I'm doing. 
Um, and I think that this is really just a result of people uh, not not following those regulations. Like someone who's like, okay, I'm just going to have one serving of this because my diet says I need to have one serving. And they end up having seven chips and they're like, that was, that was nothing. What the heck is this? I'm going to have, have I'm gonna have 170 more. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's a, it's a result of dieting. Certainly. I think it right. has, it's a direct relation to that. Right. Um, and I, and it's probably also a business move, you know, yeah. on, get people on, to buy more food companies and stuff. Maybe. Well, as as a as a human being that is substantially larger than you are, Josh, both uh, <laughs> in height and weight, uh, I will be the first to say that I practically never look at the labels. That, I know that's probably bad of me. Uh, I probably should be a little more health conscious, or at least understand a little bit better what is entering my body. Um, but I don't. I don't give a shit, <laughs> and. This, to me personally, this won't change anything because I'm the kind of jerk that snacks or eats or uh, full meals are based on being just uh, ha hunger satisfied. Um, I eat because I'm sad and I'm you sad because you are. Because I, <laughs> because I eat. Yeah, so I, I don't think this will affect my life all that much with the exception of perhaps prices and quantities at the grocery store, which I guess is the biggest concern to me because I don't want to spend more money on this shit. I don't even want to have to buy more of anything. I want exactly what I, what I, what I need. Well, fortunately for you, Dave, Dave uh, the FDA is exclusive to America. <laughs> so none of this matters. So none Canada of this matters gonna to take you? Like, it's going to take like five years for Canada. Canada's always so much slower on these things. It's going to take five years for it to get done in Canada. Or, I mean, shut my mouth if it's already been done and I didn't even realize that. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Cool. Interesting. Interesting to see how this affects the market. Interesting little tidbit of uh, food regulations over here. Food informations. Yes, totally. Well, that uh, that there, Josh, brings uh, us to uh, the end of our, our, our here podcast. Yep. Um, I feel like we covered a lot of important topics. And the biggest I takeaway feel... from today's episode for me is fuck Valentine's Day. I, You know, I was about to say the same thing, except... While you say fuck Valentine's Day, all I really want are those white chocolate cheesecake m <laughs> You That's really all I want. I, I am actually very excited about the uh, the, the Big Macs. I think that that's going to be interesting. Um, I'm also also really excited to see you try a 7-Eleven breakfast pizza. I think you are obliged now to at least buy it, take a picture of it, and take one bite and let us know what it's like. Please. I know. You're right. I, I'm going to have to I wake up. You, oh, shit. That. We totally forgot about something. Last week, you ended up going and trying that Taco Bell sandwich? Uh, I didn't actually end up going. Oh, end. you didn't get to go to the chicken sandwich? No, All right. No, well, we'll save it for next time then, uh, whenever you do get a chance to try that out. And also, uh, please, Josh, go try all these things so that we can you could report back to us next week on how it, oh, yeah. it all went. So the Taco Bell chicken chalupa, naked chalupa comes out tomorrow at the same time it does the Big Mac. So maybe I'm just going to have to do a little uh, double dipping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Down with that down with that no actually i'm not down with that <laughs> fuck double dipping shout out to the guy who double dips all the time whose name is double dip mike on the internet um i'd like to thank you all so much for listening to this podcast or watching it uh it is available on youtube it is available on the soundcloud it is available on the itunes Indeed. and every single wednesday it is available live on twitch.tv slash liquor sauce you'll be able to find the video on demand you'll be able to find uh the version uploaded to youtube uh, youtube.com slash the josh elkin and if you check in the description there is a link to the itunes podcast um you could you could just listen to it at your leisure you know uh while while you're uh at the sauna or uh going to the grocery store whatever Only the dry is, sauna <laughs> wherever it is that you listen to your podcast we hope you will consume this because it's a nice piece of content to consume tune in every single week for more food newses We've got mad newses all the time, breaking them here first for you, first here. Uh, I'd like to thank Josh. Hey, thanks, Dave. I uh, just want to reiterate Dave, uh, Dave's thanks to everybody for tuning in and, and hopefully future peoples that are uh, also watching and listening. And uh, like last week and every other week, if there are some things and topics that you want us to cover, yeah, like breaking chocolate bar news in the UK, Canada, and uh, America, and thus the rest of the world. Please let us Hit know. Hit us up. 
leave comments in all of our things, all of our social medias, all of our, uh, uh, you know, uh, communication availabilities. <laughs> right, Dave? Ex exactly. <laughs> um, that's all we've got for today, this week. And uh, we love you all. And we'll, uh, you'll listen to or see our stupid faces next time. We'll